Hey guys, Luke McElroy from Mess Performance Consulting here. Today I just wanted to quickly discuss the reason why Callum Hawkins collapsed in the marathon at the Com Games. So we've all seen it, it's all top topic at the moment. Um, he got along to about 40 k's in, collapsed twice, um, and was unable to finish the race. So I want to speak about physiologically why that happened and, and what we can actually do to try to avoid that. So first and foremost, as a bit of background, obviously he's from Scotland. Um, not sure how many people have been over there, but it's not exactly warm weather. So he already isn't acclimatized to the environment in Gold Coast, right? So it's about 28 degrees um, mid-morning, got to about 30 at, at 12 o'clock. So it's a very hot environment. He's not used to that sort of weather, okay? So that's problem number one. Now, the reason why fatigue, we have this thing called multifactorial fatigue. So there could be a number of reasons why an athlete fatigues, particularly in an event lasting two hours or longer. Uh, we could talk about we could talk about glycogen depletion and fuel depletion. Um, we could talk about muscular endurance problems. But in this circumstance, the main one that we're looking at is called thermoregulation, all right? So basically, he got too hot. He couldn't control his core body temperature, and he got too hot. So let's just run through the process of, of how we create heat, but most importantly, what the body will try to do to cool itself down, okay? So through the aerobic glycolysis system, we are going to create heat. We're also going to get external heat from the environment because it was a 30 degree day. Um, so it's a double negative here. To cool the body down, we begin sweating. So what we have to do is we have to redistribute the blood um, from the working muscles and the non-essential organs to the surface of the skin, because what that's gonna do is start to secrete our sweat glands. They're gonna uh, secrete sweat. That sweat is going to evaporate into the environment, release heat into the environment and cool the body down. Now the body's always going to prioritize survival over it is performance. So. It might sound like a bad thing that, that blood's going away from the working muscles, and it is from a performance standpoint, but the body wants to sweat, it wants to cool itself down. So the body will try to, to maintain blood flow at the muscles as well, as well, and the way it will do that is by increasing heart rate, which we could then result in an accumulation of lactic acid. Um, but all we need to understand is that body wants to, it wants to survive more than it does want to perform, okay? When we sweat, we lose blood from blood plasma, okay? So the blood's made up of multiple components. We have what we call hem uh, hematocrit, and we have what's called um, blood plasma, okay? So the hematocrit's all the stuff in the blood. We're looking at your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your platelets, all the stuff in the blood. The red blood cells obviously carry oxygen. About, for most people, about 45% of the blood is made up of hematocrit, all the stuff. The other 55%, is made up of what we call blood plasma. So blood plasma is fluid and enzymes, okay? It's really important, but it's the fluid in the blood. So 90% 90, 90 of the blood plasma is made of fluid. When we sweat, we lose out the blood plasma. Okay, when we lose blood plasma through dehydration, because that's where we sweat it from, we get an increase in what we call blood viscosity. So viscosity just means thickness. So we get thicker blood. If we have less fluid in the blood and more stuff, it's gonna get thicker, it's gonna get harder to circulate. So that's what's happening um, towards the back end of this race. When we have less blood, our stroke volume is going to decrease. So stroke volume being the amount of blood we're ejecting out of that left ventricle of the heart per beat, that's going to decrease. The reason it will decrease is because we have, we have less total blood volume. If less blood comes back to the heart, less blood is going to leave the heart. That makes sense. It's harder to do. The body will try to compensate with this decreased stroke volume by increasing heart rate. Because if we can't get as much blood per beat, we're going to beat faster in an attempt to try to maintain what we call cardiac output. So maintain our oxygen circulation. The problem is, however, when our blood becomes so thick because we've lost all the fluid, the body is actually gonna stop sweating at some point. Because if we keep sweating, the body is going to, we're not gonna be able to circulate the blood. It's gonna be so viscous, so thick, that we physically can't circulate the blood, so we're gonna have a heart attack or have a stroke. Again, the body does not wanna do that. It's always going to prioritize survival over performance. So we're gonna stop sweating. The second we stop sweating, as you can imagine, our core body temperature is going to skyrocket because we lose 70% of our heat through evaporative cooling, through sweating. So if we can't sweat, we're going to heat up very, very quickly. And when our body temperature gets above that 37 degrees, gets into that 41, 42, we call that um, obviously heat exhaustion. Uh, and that's where we're in, we're in big trouble. So this is where central fatigue comes in. This is all peripheral fatigue. This is happening outside the central nervous system. This is happening inside the central nervous system. If we hit 43 degrees, we're dead. That's it. Enzymes are denatured and we're going to die. So as soon as we get into the 40s, that's serious alarm bells ringing. And what happens is we get central fatigue. So literally, what happens is the brain will stop sending signals to the muscles. All right. So we're actually going to 
um, get less motor signals to the muscles. We'll see the coordination. Obviously, Callum was really struggling with his coordination, and it's all to do with central fatigue. So again, it doesn't want to die, so we're gonna physically stop sending signals to the muscles, and we're gonna collapse and we're gonna fall over, okay? It also makes sense that through stroke volume, that our low, we're gonna have low blood pressure too. Because if we have less blood circulating, less pressure, um, we're gonna get dizzy because we can't get as much blood around the body because we don't have as much total blood volume, okay? So what does this all mean? Obviously we saw that um, he lost, he collapsed, but from a, from a, a um, from a, how we can avoid that from the point of view of avoiding it, it's all to do with acclimatization, okay? So obviously we already said that he was from Scotland, um, so very cold, not used to the hot environment. So what acclimatization involves, it's all to do with coming over and, and exercising and training in the environment that you're gonna be competing at, okay? So um, the, the general recommendation is 14 days at the environment, three times a week at 50% VO2 max, um, at least for one to two hours in duration. So what he, what he could have done, uh, to an extent other than drinking more fluid, pouring fluid on him, he could have come over to the environment for at least two weeks while training, not just tapering. You can't just sit on the beach and acclimatize. You have to actually properly train. And what that's going to do is it will increase our sweat rate. It will decrease the amount of sodium we lose. So we're going to be better at cooling our body down, but we're not going to lose all the electrolytes, uh, which is really important in, in muscular contraction. So fairly complicated process, but as a quick summary, we get hot, we dehydrate, our blood becomes viscous, it's harder to circulate. We're gonna stop sweating because we, we, we don't wanna die. As a result, our core body temperature increases. We get central fatigue, our brain takes over, our nervous system takes over. Uh, we shut off the signals to the legs. We have low blood pressure, we get dizzy, we fall over, we collapse, we can't continue. Okay, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, multifactorial fatigue, it's, it's often more than one thing. So hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. Any questions, let us know. Uh, more content, get into the Mets Mastermind, and we'll speak to you soon.